I'm Michelle Carlson. I'm the executive director here at Lansing Art Gallery and Education Center. So um, if it's your first time, welcome. I hope you're enjoying the space. If you have been here before, um, welcome back. I just wanted to share, we have upcoming events and workshops coming up. We have a whole slew of workshops through June that you can sign up for. We have a couple deadlines. The Ingham Student Art Exhibit and Art Scholarship Alert um, for students to apply. Um, is The deadline is February 1st, so if you know of any young artists who can apply to that, please encourage them. All the information's on our website. Art Path, our public art project on the River Trail, has its call for artists open right now. The deadline is February 15th. So if you know of a muralist, sculpture, installation artist, um, please encourage them to apply to that. Um, I want to welcome Sarah. This is Sarah Hopkins. She is our new um, Exhibitions director. We want to say thank you to Katrina Daniels. She is not here right now, but she um, just left and Sarah's in Vermont. So, welcome, Sarah. Thank you, staff and board. There's several board members here today, so thank you for coming. Um, so, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah and Gerald, and they're going to have a nice conversation about his beautiful installation. So, Feel free to go. There's snacks upstairs, um, and there'll be time for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, well, first of all, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, like Michelle said, I'm Sarah Hopkins, and I am the new exhibitions director here at the Lansing Art Gallery and Education Center. Um, tonight, we are celebrating the opening of the exhibition Space Between by artist Gerald Collins, who is here with us this evening. Hello. So thank you again for being here, Gerald, and thank you everyone for, for joining us. Um, I think everyone, myself included, are um, excited to hear more about you and your work. Um, so, before going into the Q&A portion of the talk, first I'd love to give you a chance to introduce yourself and share with us a little bit more about this particular exhibition. So, feel free to just share anything you want to share with everyone. Well, first of all, hello everyone that has arrived and I uh, appreciate you all for making the trip out. Seriously, I know it's a kind of a hype but, um, for some of us, but really do appreciate that. Um, so, the uh, exhibition here is basically a common comprised of seven pieces, this being the largest one, the two sculptures right to behind you, or most of you to the left of you, right of you, um, and then behind are uh, four, uh, well three, and then one triptych, three prints, uh, and one triptych, um, and that is the show as a whole. Um, so I'll let Sarah kind of go into the questions before I continue with what it is about. Awesome, thank you. Um, so yes, I've prepared some questions for you to facilitate the discussion this evening, and then afterwards we can open it up to everyone else to ask their own questions. Um, so to start, the title of the show is Space Between. Can you share a little bit more about why you chose this title for the show? Yeah, I think, um, honestly, the title kind of stems from the understanding of the space between and uh, I kind of look to that in the notes. There's uh, copies of notes in the back, but I kind of talk about the understanding of life and death. And myself having personally going through multiple near-death experiences, that's kind of where that comes from. Um, so that is explaining the title a little bit. But. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, and in your show notes that you mentioned, um, you state that Spatial relationships not only govern the way we navigate a building or terrain, they also happen to hold a great deal of importance in the way we navigate life, literally and figuratively. Can you share how the work in this exhibition speaks to this idea? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, so the installation, being, this here being the boy work, it is the centerpiece, if you would say, um, and something that you kind of notice between the spatial relationships and the significance of those is with these three that are in front of us. Um, through these sculptures, you guys can do this throughout the night if you get a chance, but if you sit 
up along this window, you are able to experience this through these plexi sculptures behind you. And what that does is it creates a relationship between these stones, which kind of almost uh, appeal from cairns, um, which are stacks of stones that are all around the globe. Um, but they are, they've been used in ceremonial practices for generation on generation, and it's about the solstice. So when you see these through that, or you see this through that, the relationship is clearly there. Um, and that's something that, that is part of the uh, statement that Sarah gave here, so. Yeah, yeah, and I think also too, just the way that this entire space has been transformed by this temporary wall. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sarah was with me for those uh, those uh, 13 hour, 14 hour nights here, um, four days in a row. Um, to get this thing to be where it is, but um, it, it really is about coming in, me doing these installations, they're very site specific, so it really is about me coming in and morphing or adapting the space um, to something like this so that people who are used to being in this space are seeing it in a different light, no pun intended. Um, so that is kind of where that comes from. Yeah, well, and I think that actually leads really well into some of the next questions. Um, this body of work, and from my understanding, a lot of your work is primarily installation-based. Can you share more about why you choose to work in this manner? Yeah, um, I think installation for me, I do enjoy the ephemeral aspect of it. Um, that is one big thing. Also, um, I kind of, it's a little bit of a, I don't know if it's almost anti type of situation, but more so, um, I grew up painting, drawing, linoleum, all of these things, chalk paintings, all of these things as I was a kid. So the older I got, I had these ideas of how large do I want to go with these things. And when I got to college, they were showing me, hey, I can work with 50 architects and build a building if I want to. Um, so that's where these things kind of stem from, is taking those dreams, those adolescent dreams, and turning it into something that is actually physical, manifesting it and allowing people to experience it through your own perspective, your own lens. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I think it's good to kind of expand your reach as an artist and think of new ways of creating. So. Um, and in this ex exhibition, you created a site-specific installation, which you did touch on a moment ago. Um, can you share more about your creative process in deciding what your site-specific installation should look like, how you plan and engineer the work for a particular location, et cetera? So it starts, so it's a long process, I'll say that. Um, it starts kind of with the sketch. Um, starts with the sketch, and then it goes from that to 3D software. Um, so one of the things that uh, I've been very fortunate to have access to is this said 3D software where it alleviates me having to have a studio, a physical studio to so set these things up. And what it ends up doing when I've done these things in the past, it's almost like a proposal type of situation where you're going through a roll of decks of designs that I've created in Sketch and 3D that are down to the measurement. Um, and basically, if I'm coming into a specific site, I then come in, take some measurements. It's almost like uh, it's almost like if I'm coming in and buying the building, but clearly I'm not. Uh, but I'm coming in, measuring things, um, getting blueprints, and then basically taking the designs and adapting that to said blueprints and to the measurements to make sure things are accurate. Um, because the engineering is a big portion of it. Obviously, this thing here is about 16 feet wide um, and seven feet tall. So the uh, the engineering is very important to the safety of all of you guys and even myself when I'm building this thing. So, um, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. Um, and then, yeah, I guess maybe more conceptually speaking, like how do you come up with the idea of your installations or behind them? Like for this particular space, I imagine the window had a lot to do with that, but maybe you can share more about that. And, previous time you've done it. Yeah, so um, I did this, this, this type of installation I did uh, about four years ago in downtown Detroit, right next to Shinola. Um, and it was about, my thing is always, it's kind of like I like the open studio concept. Um, so somebody being able to walk on the street who has no idea what is going on, 
no idea that it's even a gallery most times. Um, and especially in the last case, like this obviously is a gallery, but the last one was more of just an open light box. Um, and it engages people in that way. So it has that outside, inside relationship. And that's something that I kind of pulled from architecture um, and studying different architects and staying in different homes that have these type of relationships. So traveling out to California, staying in Topanga Canyon, for instance, and being able to like get that experience of the outside, inside, looking at the canyons, seeing the sun, the moon, the stars, all of these different things. So it really is an interpersonal practice and it is based off of literally how I'm feeling at that moment and what I'm doing and how I'm living my life. Um, so that's where it started. And even uh, chrome therapy is another one, uh, but we'll get into that. I know that's in the show notes and I'm sure Sarah will probably bring that up even more. So yeah, chrome therapy is another thing, so. Yeah, well, I mean, if you want to actually read the on that a little bit more now, I don't have a question about chrome cool, therapy cool. in here. Um, yeah, so those, um, those near-death experiences that I talked about. Um, in high school, um, I learned how to meditate. Um, so about 10, 11 years ago now. Um, and basically from that point on, com combining that experience and learning how to do that with understanding the near-death experiences that have st stemmed from even when I was born, um, understanding those things, it kind of gave me kind of prompted me to almost find the light, right? Um, and then essentially I started, I went from minimalism to then finding other light artists, Dan Flavin, James Terrell, uh, you can, the list can go on. Um, uh, but basically from that, I started practicing with the substance of light. So basically using it in my daily life, meditating in it. That is the practice of chromotherapy, dealing with the light that is so concentrated and saturated to the point where the chroma, it breaks your depth of perception. Um, and that is what I've been meditating. So doing that, a lot of, lot of interpersonal things come out of that, you know, release, all these different things. And from that, it led me again to practice. So now I've been practicing chromotherapy for since 2013. Um, and that's just something that now it's almost like I can snap a finger and just get into meditation mode. So it's evolved over time, but that is where these things come from. It's kind of experiencing again that space between uh, when you're meditating and almost just before, like in a near death experience. So. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Thank you for sharing more about that. Um, I'll just ask a few more questions and then we can open it up to everyone else for their questions because I'm sure some of you have some, some interesting questions for Harold. Um, we talked a little bit about the creative process when thinking about site-specific installations and things like that, but I think as artists and creators, we also have you know maybe um, routines or regular creative practices that we participate in. Uh, do you want to share a little bit more about what your creative practice looks like? Yeah, for sure. Um, I walk a lot. <laughs> I definitely go for walks a lot. There's a few of my coworkers in the building. They can attest to our walk challenge uh, during the summer, and also uh, just me going out and walking the parking lot <laughs> um, in the summer when the weather was nice. But I walk almost every other day, um, if not every day. Um, spend a lot of time in nature. I'm fortunate to live by nature, so around my house there are some wetlands and things of that nature. So it really is embedding me in these things so I can look at like the sun and mimic these things and pull from what I'm seeing in life um, to create in my artwork. So even down to the subject matter of some of those prints in the back, the water, things of that nature, I would go to lakes, go to you know different parks that have gardens that I walk through and just listen to the water record sounds of natural things. It's been something that I've been doing since, again, since college, because I was fortunate to have an apartment at the very end of campus, away from everything. So I walked a lot, um, so for sure. Awesome, thank you. Um, are there, what kinds of projects are you currently working on, or are there things that you're you know, planning for in the next year or so? Uh, this year, um, 
working on, well, we've got hit up about doing uh, a larger version of these sculptures behind you guys for the summer. Uh, I have a friend uh, who's a musician who I've worked with at the College of Creative Studies doing something like this before. Um, he's a musician, we've done soundscapes together. That's a part of me recording sound. So I build sound for some of the installations that I have. Um, but we probably will do something out in uh, Arizona for a music video, so we'll see what that turns into. Um, and uh, I had a conversation yesterday at my old college. Um, I was asked to go back and speak, so something might fall through there um, in the gallery there. So hopefully, uh, you know, I can pinpoint that and hit that point home, so we'll see. But yeah, that's about it, and just continuously making these works. Um, so I'll continuously be doing that, even if I'm sweeping floors for a living, so. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, a true artist is gonna create no matter the, the life circumstance. Um, I guess, a couple more questions. Is there any advice that you would give to someone that maybe wants to create or is interested in being an artist or designer or anything like that? Um, know yourself. That's like a, know yourself. It's like the biggest thing um, because you can, there's a million directions you can go as a designer, an artist. People tell you, hey, that's the better direction. That's the better direction. But ultimately, it's about what you feel. Um, and that goes back to that point of interpersonal and being, meditating, and dealing with myself to know that hey, no matter what, sometimes these works might be hard to move, whatever it is, but it doesn't really matter because again, I'm creating these things to share. And that's what the point of everything is, is to find your gift and share it, so. Yeah, that's great advice. I think it's, it's easy to tell when something's coming from within or when it's genuine, so. Um, I guess the last question would be, if people want to learn more about you or your work, uh, how can they keep up with you? Do you have a website, social media? Yeah, um, I'm on socials, but I'm, I'm on there, but I'm not on there. <laughs> so I have a profile I've updated, you know, periodically whenever I'm feeling, you know, the, the energy to do so. Um, but I also have a website I'm in the process of redesigning that. Um, so yeah, you can keep up with me at GeraldTCollins.com and Gerald Collins underscore on Instagram, so those are two. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, you know having this discussion with me this evening, and I'm just going to go ahead and give everyone else an opportunity to ask questions if they'd like to. Um, I think it would probably make the most sense to hand the mic around. So, a question here. So I'm curious about your meditation practice and thinking about the way you play with space. If you uh, especially as I look at the main piece here, mm -hmm. um, if you explore concepts of emptiness uh, and how that leads into working with space. Mm, that is a good question. Um, I, I have not studied the concept of emptiness, but I will say that minimalism is part of that, I would say, um, because I actually had made this point yesterday talking to someone. Um, I did a piece in a old event house in Del Rey, a uh, light piece that was at the very top of this fire damaged home in the middle of nowhere. Um, and it was to commemorate my upbringing of living in a home that we, it was a little bit of challenges toward the end because it was constant break-ins, right? So it was not necessarily safe. Um, but minimalism, I'm, I'm almost feeling like I ran into minimalism because of that, because I was getting things taken from me so many times. So at that point, it helped me with attachment. Um, and it also helped me understand almost the concept of emptiness, right? Because the less in, the less going on, the, more, the less distraction. The less you see, the less enticing it is for someone to take it from you, right? Um, so I feel like that kind of under, helped me understand emptiness a little bit, um, but for sure, um, meditation um, that that built on that for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Um, you had mentioned traveling and seeing different types of architecture. I was wondering if there was a, like a place that you had been that has your favorite type, or what specifically is your favorite type of architecture? 
Oh, great question. Now you're turning me into an architecture nerd. <laughs> um, uh, actually, I love uh, modern architecture. I love all of, all of aspects of it, even some of the Baroque, some of the early Gothic. Like, there's things that I find in all of them, um, but I think I prefer more of a modern, minimalist approach. Um, and even uh, as far as the place that would have fa my favorite architecture, um, New York is pretty good, uh, Chicago, but it's more so um, me knowing about the structures and kind of almost seeking them out. So that's part of one of my goals is to travel and see like Frank Lloyd Wright falling water or Mies van der Rohe, um, Mies van der Rohe's uh, Island House or all of these different, uh, you know, Frank Gehry, all of these different artists and architects. So. It's part of that too, but yeah, I, I just kind of enjoy more of that minimalist approach and that having that as having that aspect of nature available to you. So. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. No, appreciate you, man. Um, so I feel like all eyes are on me almost. <laughs> I was wondering because you mentioned a lot of near-death experiences that kind of influenced your artistry. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about how different things would be or how different your art would be alternatively if you didn't experience those near-death experiences? I probably, um, that's a good question. I have not actually thought about that, um, but I do feel, I guess to answer that question, I do feel like if I did not experience those things. It's more so if I wasn't conscious of them, right? Um, because I experienced them, I can't necessarily control what I experience in my life, um, but I can control how conscious I am of that experience. And that kind of was the thing where it was like, because some of those near-death experiences happened when I was a child, I didn't even remember the actual thing happening. I just dealt with the trauma of it happening. Um, so again, just dealing with that and understanding uh, that I have to be conscious of that and not let that uh, make or break me, essentially. It was almost like a new life situation, if, if you want to put it that way. Because right. it, it, it took a lot of fear out of things. So probably this explains why I spend 40 or 60 hours plus doing stuff like this right. four days in a row. So it's like a butterfly effect almost. It's kind mm -hmm. of interesting. But cool. Thank you. You're welcome, man. Anyone else? What's a uh, medium you haven't used yet that you're looking to use in the future? Um, more video. Yeah. Uh, more video. Um, I've done video before. Um, my thesis actually was a video project that involved lighting that was changing color. So it had the light aspect no matter what. Um, but definitely doing more video and bringing that back into the fold. Um, and just expanding on the sculptures and things of that nature. So trying to, one of the things that a famous artist, one of my favorite, Richard Serra, he said, is uh, being able to figure out how a, a, stat, a static material can be manipulated in any different way and how you can play with it, so, um, which you can turn it into. So that's kind of where I'm headed with these things. Um, I have a lot of incomplete artwork, and then sometimes I'll be going through it, and I will realize that I don't have the vision I had when I made it. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get that? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. You hit the cutting room floor 50 million times. Um, definitely. Uh, trials and tribulations. I mean, a lot of the installations, too, are, um, you know, they have to be adapted. So I'm like, you know, this one in particular, uh, it was done previously. The circle was brought down a little lower. Um, and it was 10 feet instead of 7, and it was 15 feet. So it was a foot shorter in width and about 3 feet taller. Um, so basically doing that, like, you get to a space and they're like, hey, well, that work won't work, so now you have to figure out how to make this work, so I have to go back to the cutting room floor and say, well, let's shave some up here, move this down, do this, and now we have to figure out different engineering, too. So, um, but for sure.
questions, we can go ahead and wrap things up. Um, but thank you again, Gerald, for sharing all of that about your, your work and just more about your creative practice. Um, and definitely encourage everyone to, to talk to Gerald if you have any more questions or want more insight and looking at the work through the new perspective. Um, and also, there's lots of new artwork in the retail gallery, so definitely check that out and feel free to, to browse and shop our, our new artwork in the retail gallery as well. Um, but without further ado, we will go ahead and wrap this up, and thanks again for coming. Thank you.